Hey everybody, now I'm just thinking here, I got an idea. I need your feedback. I think if all Americans knew the story behind Rachel Corey's death, things would change. I really believe that. A dramatic play was made called, I believe it's called My Name is Rachel, and it opened up in America. Some people fought it and tried to shut it down and it got shut down in one theater. But straight plays in theaters have some impact, but not the impact that they used to. Many years ago, plays were a great uh, medium for getting messages out. I think the most powerful medium now is, is movies. Now, that being said, I believe there is a Rachel Corey documentary out right now. Funny thing about documentary films, you know, we think of the, the Super Size Me and The Inconvenient Truth. They had big audiences and they did make some change. But there is a quote-unquote documentary audience. There's a certain group of people who are already inclined, predisposed to certain thoughts that are more inclined to, to rent and purchase documentary films. And it's a relatively small audience. So for the most part, if you want a big audience, a documentary film really probably isn't the way to go. That being said, the movie The Cove won an, the Academy Award this year for Best Documentary Film, and it made a change. It actually, after this movie came out, the policies in Japan towards killing dolphins has changed because of this movie. So Hollywood can actually dictate and change policy. But feature films is where all the juice is. I mean, that's where the big audiences are, and you can really change things. Now, give me a couple examples. One, here's a story about a nuclear power plant conspiracy. Woman who is going to be a whistleblower mysteriously gets killed, and all these stories come out. They make a movie about it called Silkwood. And Silkwood came out in 1974. And the movie helped propel even more dialogue about what had happened and kept it in people's minds. That was nominated for five Academy Awards. The film of the year, this was the Academy Award winner for the year 2000, uh, Aaron Brockovich, which is another true story. This film was about a woman who battled a big corporation and won with the help of an attorney. Millions of dollars in end change policy. Uh, here's a funny one. Fatal Attraction, Glenn Close and Michael Douglas, 1987. Now, it was just a movie. I mean, it wasn't based on any true story, but it was about this guy who had an affair on his wife. And it was so frightening that I talked to men who told me if they ever considered having an affair in their life, they wouldn't cheat on their wives because of this movie. That's how frightened they were because of what could happen if the person you cheat on your wife with goes crazy and comes after you. Is if you can get a big audience, then you can change the world. There's a guy I met in a Muslim film event in Hollywood, and he sits on the board of Lionsgate Film. He's a Persian guy, Persian-American. His name is Mark Amin. I met him, but it was like in the men's restroom. We talked just for a second, but I was there. I did meet him. He was behind Armageddon. Big money, monster big money making movie. No real message behind Armageddon. But he also got passionately involved in a movie that I thought was fantastic called The Peaceful Warrior with Nick Nolte. Came out in 2006. And he talked about that movie, about how important it was and what a difference it made to him. But he got no audience. So there's this constant battle. Do you want to make money in Hollywood? Or do you want to go broke trying to sell a message? And if you have a message, you have to kind of sneak it in. The story of Rachel Corey is every, every bit as compelling as the Karen Silkwood story from Silkwood, and every bit as compelling as the Aaron Brockovich story from Aaron Brockovich. And I'd say even more compelling because of the impact it could have in changing America's mind about Israel and Palestine and about what's happening over there. So, much, so many things will come to light with this movie. So I would like to get behind creating a feature film, not a documentary, about Rachel Corey's life. Maybe it's already out there, I don't know if the, the parents, if people have contacted any of these people, but I would be willing to get some investors together, a friend of mine or two that are Hollywood producers. If we had some investors who were willing to back up, I would put up some money for it. If we could get maybe, I think it probably cost about $10 million to make a quality feature film. If you get a chance, see that peaceful warrior, oh, Nick Nolte. I just loved it. Let me know what you think. I'd be interested in getting behind some investors and getting some people together and making the Rachel Corey movie, having this Rachel Corey feature film debut in Hollywood, not in some little film festivals here and there, but really get backed and done right, done accurately, not bias, sway either way, just do it the way 
leave the mystery there, make it exciting, and have people talking and thinking about Rachel Corey. Because when I walk down the streets of America, I can walk up to people, and unless they're Muslim or Israeli, they know nothing about Rachel Corey. And the Rachel, when I tell people the story of Rachel Corey, almost every American goes, really? Oh my gosh, Israel did that? Israel's a, um, a city, right? Or a country, right? I'm sorry, you know, I'm not really good at my geology. But it sounds terrible. What do you think? Can we get some investors together to do it? I mean, I don't want to be in the film business, but I'd like to get this rolling. Um, and maybe it's a bad idea. Tell me where I'm wrong. And I think a feature film will do better than a doc film. So let me know what you think. Bye. You're a lady, oh dear.